So we've had this a couple times with a presentation that's actually about something from New Mexico and we get to learn a little more about it this time turquoise. All right, my conversation is about what everybody expects and what everybody knows. Turquoise, state of New Mexico. So I'd like to take you on a journey that will take this little portion and expand it into a global presentation of what turquoise really is. So when you all go mining for turquoise, like I'm over there mining for turquoise, um, we mine it all around the world, not just New Mexico, but the most famous mine in New Mexico is Cerritos, but the best turquoise that comes mined in New Mexico is called Tyrone. It comes in veins, it comes in nuggets, and we cut those into stones, and once we have the stones, then it's set into jewelry. There's different presentations that go on and how we use turquoise, and so the traditional necklace that they string and drill the beads into was done there by Agustin Lovato. We've all seen the squash blossom, remembering that the Spanish introduced the silver and those styles of jewelry, and then your modern day Indian jewelry is in gold. One of the fun things about all of what we just looked at and what we expect and see in turquoise is all combined into mystical qualities such as it'll protect you from lightning, rattlesnake bites, even ex-husbands. It is the most powerful stone in the world. So it's a participation in everything that you guys already know. We're in New Mexico and we're going to hear a talk on turquoise, but if we learn more about turquoise, the state of New Mexico has the least and absolute worst turquoise in the world. And I can say that, I own one of the active mines. <laughs> but turquoise is actually one of the rarest gemstones. To learn why, most turquoise is chopped white, it's too soft to cut and polish, and so when you see all of these colors, that is the rarity, that's the gemstone. Only 15% of what comes out of the production of a turquoise mine is actually blue or green. Iron makes it green, copper makes it blue, but it takes thousands of years to go from chalk white that is so soft you can write on a chalkboard to where that you get the low to high grade colors, white being your softest, and so the deeper the blues and the deeper the greens, then you get into the rare of the turquoises. So if you have a deep blue or a deep green turquoise, it's worth more than the lighter colors. <laughs> Whereas your matrix is also another category when you look at these stones up here and on the next slide, the matrix is the mountain that the turquoise forms in on and around. So when we go into the deposits and extract it and then cut the stone, we end up with patterns. The rarest pattern is called spiderweb, and so spiderweb turquoise is your rarest matrix of a turquoise stone. So you could have low grade color and a high grade matrix, or you could have the reverse or any kind of mix in between. It's actually mined around the United States. The state of Nevada has the best turquoise in the world and the most in the United States. Colorado and Arizona produce tons more turquoise than we do. And so we're actually the center of the world of turquoise for marketing. But not supply. And that gets real important when you actually go out into Old Town, Santa Fe, and all of these places because when people go shopping, most of the turquoise, 80% of all Indian jewelry is set with turquoise that is mined in China and Mexico and Iran. And then you can mix in some of the others for flavor. And so it is a global gem that has participated around the world. So the first location of turquoise mines is the Sinai Peninsula. The most famous turquoise is Persian. The best and most rare is called Black Web Number 8. The rarest mine in the world is Land of Blue, which is Nevada. And the largest producing country is China. When you get involved in the people who have been mining and using turquoise for thousands of years, this is their art form. The one up on the right is in gold, and it's in Croatia. It's a portrait of a ruler way back in the day. And the other one is a carving done in Italy. The cup on the far left is Persian, set in 18 karat gold. The ones below it are the Tibetan styles of jewelry. And the one on the far right is a high-grade nugget from China. So when we learn history, by reading books and understanding marketing past Route 66 for the whole comprehension of turquoise, and we learned it is a global gemstone mined for thousands of years everywhere in the world. We were the last indigenous culture in the world to ever use turquoise. There are lots of imitations on the market. In fact, 95% of all Indian jewelry is set with imitation. 95% of the whole market in the world is actually imitation. We can take the white, fill it with plastic waxes and oil, and get any color you want. If you want to learn more about turquoise, a book that my dad and I wrote is called Turquoise on Earth, which is available on the market. 
Our new book is coming out October 1st. It's 550 color shots by my lovely wife. It's hardcover, it's $75. So I need more than my mother to buy one, so. <laughs> <laughs> and then now here's the complete look of the map that you actually only saw what your assumption was of New Mexico. This is a map that shows the major mines in the United States, and you'll notice that New Mexico has some of the least.